Number 82. Of the five elements, A, L, C, L, I, N, A, and R, B, which has the most exothermic reaction? E represents an atom. And what name is given to the energy for the reaction? Hint. Note the process depicted does not correspond to electron affinity. And then they give you the reaction right here. All right. So this reaction should look pretty similar, right? We actually have talked in depth of the reverse reaction, which I will put on the right-hand side. We have talked about an atom being whether in a gas or a solid or a liquid. An atom will actually lose an electron and become a positive plus that actual electron. What type of energy is this? This is actually the process of ionization energy. Remember, ionization energy is the en energy needed to lose one electron. And here it is. Whenever you see an electron on the product side of a reaction, that means that it's always lost. So the energy here is on the product side. And remember, the product side is the right side. Oops. So this is the product side. This is the reactant side. So products on the right, reactants on the left. And if you ever see an electron by itself, that means that it's always lost if it's on the product side. Now, we should know a couple of things about ionization energy. Ionization energy is always a positive energy value. But the positive doesn't actually mean that the energy is positive. The positive tells you that energy was um, absorbed. So energy was gained in the process, energy was absor absorbed, that's what the positive means. Remember, energy, by default, is always a positive number. Just kind of like money is always like a positive thing, right? You can never have negative amount of money, technically, right? You can never have a negative $100. The negative, if you see that in your bank account, that just means that you lost $100, as opposed to the positive means that you gained $100. The same thing here for energy. Positive means that you gained energy. Negative means that you just lost energy. But energy by itself is technically a positive number. So, basically, we can use our trend to figure out what the ionization energy is, and then we'll do the complete opposite, because these two reactions, the one that I drew on the right-hand side and this one, is opposites of each other. So, let's see. We know ionization energy trend, right? As you go from left to right, ionization energy, I'll just put IE, ionization energy should increase. So it's getting harder and harder and harder to remove an electron, mainly because these are nonmetals, and nonmetals always want to gain electrons, not lose them. And as you go from top to bottom, ionization energy should decrease. So now let's put these five atoms on the map. Let's circle them. So I have aluminum, which is over here. We have chlorine, which is over here, iodine, and sodium's over on the left-hand side, and rubidium is two periods down below it. So now from here, we can kind of get a sense as to which one would have the highest ionization energy because then we can just know what would be the answer. So here, which one do you think has the highest ionization energy? Well, as we go down a group, ionization energy actually decreases. So that would mean that it's less. So rubidium would be out, and iodine would also be out. And as you go from left to right, ionization energy should increase. Chlorine's the one that's all the way to the right. Therefore, chlorine would have the highest ionization energy. So Cl would have the highest ionization energy. Let's just say that this is like, a, you know, plus 100, and that's the highest number out of all of them, kilojoules. That's a unit for energy. So if we just had to flip it, because this reaction, remember, is reverse. And whenever you reverse a reaction, the energy amount just swaps from, in this case, being a positive to being a negative. And negative is exothermic. So which one would have the most exothermic reaction? 
it would be chlorine. Because it has the highest ionization energy, ionization energy is always positive, endothermic. So on the flip, if you just reverse the reaction, it would also have the most exothermic, the biggest negative number, and that's the case there. Now, they say what name is given to the energy for this reaction? You could have two answers here. One, if we just went on the premise of what we were talking about here, this would basically just be the reverse of ionization energy. Because ionization energy is always losing an electron, this reaction right here is gaining an electron because the electron is on the reactant side. And just know that whenever you gain an electron, it's always exothermic. So there's always going to be that negative in your energy value. The better response for this is called a reduction reaction. This one we haven't gotten into because this is only chapter three, but a reduction reaction is always when you gain an electron. The flip side would be oxidation, which is the loss of an electron. But either of these, I would say, is the name that's given to the energy for this reaction. All right? So there you go, guys. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If it did, click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe because you could get tons more questions coming directly into your feed. Help you on quizzes, tests, homework, whatever it is. Have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. See you in the next question.